Hey there. Um, all right. So media library, we've talked about the media library many times, um, especially if you've done a training with us, you know that we advise that you save images um, as small as you possibly can before uploading them to the media library. But what does that mean? So let's jump actually out of WordPress for a second, and we're going to jump into Photoshop. If you don't have access to Photoshop, that's okay. Um, you may have another photo editing platform you can use. Adobe Express might have an option you can use. Um, if you have questions, you can reach out to our team for some recommendations. But since Photoshop is kind of what we use and it's something that's widely available, this is what I'm going to use to demonstrate. So first things first, I'm going to use this uh, demo image. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flatten my image. Now this just takes all the extra layers out and it is our first step to making things smaller. Now the next thing I'm going to do is come up here to image and I'm going to go to image size. Now you'll see some numbers here. Um, what I find to, uh, is best to do is first to go to resolution. I set that to 72. Um, a lot of times when you download an image from the web, especially on stock sites, um, they have a tendency to give them to you pretty large. So they'll have the resolution set at 300. That's great if you're printing, but if you're uploading to the web, you really only need a resolution resolution of 72 pixels per inch. So the other piece is this is going to depend a little bit on where the image is going to go on your site. If the image is going to span the width of a page, I usually set it to 1400. If an image is going to be about half the size of a page, I'll usually set that to about 800. Um, it really does depend but I find a safe bet if you're going to upload an image that needs to be a little bit more flexible, like it might be used in a few different places, 1400 is a good way to go. Um, in this particular instance, I'm going to save it as 800 um, width. The height should automatically adjust. If it doesn't, um, you can just undo what you just did and make sure that this little link is turned on. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to type 800. You see my height automatically adjusted. My resolution stayed the same. And if I'm going to take this from a um, larger image and I'm reducing the size, I just want to make sure I've got reduction on. Note, you cannot, or it's not at least recommended, to upscale images. So if I have an image that's 800 pixels and I want it to go up to 1400, if it's already been saved, that's not recommended because it will become pixelated and that won't look good on your website. So word to the wise, always go from big to small, never small to big. So my final step in Photoshop is I'm going to go up to file down to export and this button called save for web legacy. This is just going to ensure that my file is as small as it possibly can go. So what I generally will do is click on JPEG. I'll come over here. I'm going to take this even smaller. I'm going to say this is going to be 80. This is still very high, but it does cut my quality down a smidge. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit just my download section. I'm going to go ahead and hit replace. Now I'm going to save that. So then I'm going to go back to my media library and I'm going to upload the folder or the file that I just saved. And if I click on that file, I can see here that this is 156 kilobytes. That's great um, as far as size is concerned. That's a, that's a good size. What I generally try to tell folks is the larger that you get, aka the closer you get to a meg, you're way too big. We want to stay as, as far down as we can. And some people will even optimize farther than this. But we find that this is like an easy way of keeping files small while not, you know, over working the file to the point where it gets pixelated. Now, another recommendation that I have is use a compression plugin. Now, the one that we like to use right now is called Smush. Um, and Smush is really nice because once you install it on your site, um, it will actually automatically optimize anything you upload to it. And if there's anything that you, let's say you already had 1600 images like we do on our site, um, and then you install Smush, It'll allow you with the free version to go through and you can what's called bulk smush um, 50 images at a time and it'll compress those images. So you can see, even though we optimize most of our images, we still have saved a ton of space um, by using this image compression plugin. So um, there's some other options that it throws in here too: lazy loading. So just loading things one at a time, um, using some alternate web formats, things like that. And there's a paid option if you want to go even um, more intense with it. But even we found the free 
option is very helpful. So between using a compression plugin and making sure your images are saved for web and making sure they're correctly sized, you should be good to go. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, and again, reach out to our team if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Bye.